All right, so again, today on the Live Shape It Up show, we are going to be talking about low-carb diets and what they are not telling you. So if we have never met before, my name is Nicole Simonin. I am a personal trainer at Shape It Up with a background in physical therapy and a former professional ballet dancer. I help women over 40 get fit and feel more comfortable in their own skin. And you can learn more about Shape It Up by going to shapeitupfitness.com. All right, I see some people popping on. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And feel free to put any questions you have in the comment section. You can input them at any time you like. And I will answer them at the end of this broadcast. If you are going, if you're watching on the rebroadcast, you can still comment and I'll go back into the post and reply to any comments. So today we are talking about low carb diets and what they aren't telling you. Uh, give me a wow face if you have heard of the keto diet. If you haven't heard of the keto diet, I'm very happy for you, <laughs> but you're probably living under a rock. Um, so keto is probably the hottest diet out there right now. It's actually been around for quite a long time, and it's kind of spun out of the Atkins diet, which was back in 1970. Um, I know I wasn't born yet. I was close to being born, but 1970 was a long time ago. And um, so this diet has been around for a while. And basically what it is, it's keto is short for ketogenic. And the whole idea is there's different systems that your body has that metabolize um, the food that we eat to give us energy. The preferred energy source for your body is carbs, is glucose. Uh, blood sugar. So the way the ketogenic diet is, is it focuses on a different system to get your metabolism going, which is burning more on fat as fuel. So there are different cycles. The body really likes to do the carb one. That's probably the easiest one. So the burning of the fat for metabolism is a little bit harder for your body. Um, the whole idea of the ketogenic diet is to get your body into what's called a state of ketosis. And again, that's basically your body relying on fats to fuel your body and give you energy. Um, so what is a typical low-carb diet? They typically consist of eating less than 20 grams of carbs per day. That is really not a lot. You couldn't even eat a banana, um, like really nothing. <laughs> it's just really low. So again, the examples of a ketogenic diet are Atkins, um, Paleo is pretty close, Whole30, the protein powder diet. So here is the dirty little secret that they're not telling you about low carb diets. Most fad diets will jump at the chance to eliminate your carbs, and this is why. Because once you take out your carbs, the carbohydrate molecular structure, I won't get too sciencey on you, don't worry, <laughs> but the structure of a carb molecule actually pulls in water. So when you take out carbs, you take out water. So that is why you immediately see this huge drop in scale weight when you go on a low carb diet. You take the carbs out, your water drops. That is not what you want long term. You do not want to be in a dehydrated state. And ideally, you want to lose body fat, right? Not water weight. So when you take out your carbs initially, that is what most people see in that first week is that, you know, it could be 7, 10 pounds, depending on how much water you're holding. Don't let that fool you into thinking that you lost body fat because you did not. Um, so... The other thing too is when you're carrying less water in your body, um, your skin kind of pulls in a little bit and it does help if you are toned and it will define your muscles a little bit more. And this is actually what a lot of bodybuilders do before they get on stage. They pull out the water, which I don't think is really the healthiest thing. Um, and again, depending on you know, what your goals are in life and whether you want to do that. But you also like for photo shoots and stuff like that. Or if you have an event, if you pull your water out just a little bit, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. You still have to drink water. But if you pull a little bit out, it um, pulls the skin a little bit closer to the muscle, which makes you look more toned. That is not a long standing thing to do. You could do it, get away for a day maybe. Um, as I said, you are drinking water throughout the day, but just probably not as much as you would. 
So I went off a little tangent on water, but that's okay. <laughs> so um, the other secret they're not telling you is if you look at all the fad diets out there, um, they all have one thing in common, and that is lower calories. Carbohydrates are a substantial amount of calories in your daily intake. So if you normally eat two cups of pasta a day and you've removed your pasta, that alone could be about a 400 calorie deficit. So of course you're going to lose weight because you're automatically cutting your calories down. Um, the third thing that I feel like, especially with keto or any kind of diet that um, is very stringent or very like feels like it's rigorous, like it's almost like you have to plan your whole life around this diet, um, is kind of like a badge of honor. Have you ever met those people that are like, yes, well, I don't eat carbs and they just make it sound not, I'm not picking on anybody, but the very, they seem like they are having this badge of honor to sacrifice and use willpower, you know, so they can muster through this diet and get it done. And keto is no exception. Uh, it can be very, very difficult to maintain a ketogenic diet. So just to give you an idea of a ketogenic diet, again, you're only eating probably about 20, maybe 50 grams of carbs per day. And most of your foods consist of high protein and high fats. A lot of people kind of run with this and they just don't eat vegetables or anything like that and they just get like a double cheeseburger without the bun and they think they're ketogenic. So that's where in the issue about um, ketogenic diets kind of gets a little bit muddled. Um, so my opinion in do low carbs diet do low carb diets work um, I, you need carbs for life and like I was just saying the confusion I think comes in is what do you consider a carb donuts pastries pretzels pasta all the P words it seems like processed foods boxed or canned foods you do not need these these are the things that are causing us so much issues and it's not to say that you can never have them because if I said to myself I can never have a donut again I would probably go out and eat all the donuts in the world <laughs> but you, you can allow yourself or choose to have a donut or some cake just not every day right so take a look at what you're eating as far as your processed foods um, and According to the American Dietetic Association, you need a minimum of 130 grams of carbohydrates per day. I think that varies on the individual. If you're very, very active, you're going to need more carbs in order to have energy throughout the day. Um, if you're not as active, then you can pull back the carbs and, you know, see how you feel. It's very individualized. It's very, you know, tailored to what you need. Um, a majority of your carbs should be coming from vegetables, right? You have your fibrous vegetables, which are your broccolis, your cauliflower, your lettuce, your spinach, all that kind of um, vegetables that have fiber in them. And then you have your more complex carb vegetables, which are your squash, um, your sweet potatoes, your regular potatoes, and things like that. That is what I think you should be eating as far as carbs. Um, and just not eliminating them altogether because you're not getting the fiber that you need to. So here is some good things about keto. Uh, there have been studies that have shown that ketogenic diets are very beneficial for children who have epilepsy. Um, again, it's still new, but that is probably the only benefit that I have seen out of doing keto. Um, or red, I should say. So, but they're also saying it's possible that Parkinson, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, sleep disorders, autism, and even brain cancer possibly could benefit from a ketogenic diet. Uh, they're also talking about type 2 diabetes being very good for ketogenic. But I think what they're trying to do is it's really about lowering your sugar amounts as opposed to increasing your proteins and your fats. So I feel like they're kind of tweaking it a little bit to make it seem like ketogenic is the way to go. But really, you could have a regular diet um, that incorporates carbs and still have type 2 diabetes and still be able to maintain your sugar levels. Um, but there's no human conclusive studies to prove ketogenic diets are any better for these type of people. So again, always talk to your doctor before you go changing your diet or doing anything that may or may not affect you because you never know um, 
you know, you might have an illness or something going on that you're not aware of. So always be careful when you switch anything in your diet. So the downside of low carb diets, uh, you will experience extremely low energy levels. Now I have tried ketogenic just because I don't know if you, the last video I think I mentioned, I have reactive hypoglycemia. It does not have anything to do with diabetes supposedly, um, but it's just my blood sugar, like I have to eat every three to four hours. So, so I did try the ketogenic just to see if I felt better blood sugar wise, but energy levels, they will tank big time. You will be agitated. <laughs> you will have um, sickness or flu-like symptoms. They call it the carb flu a lot of times. You'll have brain fog um, because again, our brain needs sugar in order to function. Depression is another one. Um, and depression more about like when you go into social situations, like if you're going out to eat, you know, you're very limited to what you can have on a ketogenic diet. So, you know, that goes into the whole mindset, which I work with my clients on as well. Um, you know, you want to find a diet that's not going to make you depressed. This, you're going to feel happy about eating the foods that you're eating. The other thing you might notice with a ketogenic diet is muscle loss. Um, your metabolism might drop and muscle is usually the first thing to go. Fat is always the last thing to go. Um, you may have increased cravings. Bonking, which is a term, um, it's like, it's called hitting the wall. A lot of times runners will use this term. Um, it is not a fun feeling. I have it with the reactive hypoglycemia. It's like your blood sugar tanks and you just feel like either you're going to pass out or you just, you just don't feel good. Um, the other disadvantage of the keto diet is, again, low fiber intake. Um, and also, there are people out there that have kidney disorders that should not be on high protein diets and um, your kidney and your liver. So again, this is why you need to go to your doctor and make sure that everything else is working fine if you decide that keto is the way you want to go. Um, be careful when you go to doctors. They definitely know their craft, but as far as nutrition, um, I, I don't know. There's some doctors who know what they're not talking about, and then some I think they're just following the mainstream of, you know, whatever fad diet is out there. So again, use your discretion, kind of figure out what you feel you need to do. If you need help, happy to help you as well. So you can um, reach out to me. So will you get fat if you eat carbs? No, <laughs> I eat carbs all the time and I am not heavy. It really comes down to calories, how you're burning the calories, what you are, what your workouts are. Are they muscle building workouts um, or more like a body fat loss program might be a better way to put it. Or are you just running? What are you doing? Are you doing nothing? So no, it really, again, varies on what type of program you're on and how your body reacts to carbs. So it's very tailored. Um, so does this mean you cannot do a low carb diet? No, you can do it if you want. Everybody is really individualized. Some people do very well on lower carb diets. Um, I know I'm personally not one of them. Some people do better with higher carbs. It's really about tweaking and kind of finding out where your sweet spot is and where you mentally are as well, because as we all know, <laughs> uh, most women are very emotionally attached to their carbs. You know, had a bad day. Oh, let's dive into a bag of potato chips or a bag of cookies. Um, so that's a whole nother aspect of carbs and, you know, taking them out of your diet. Um, so I think we've covered everything about carbs and um, we're going to go into the Q&A time. Um, and while I'm waiting for questions to pop up, I want to enjoy uh, invite you to next week's Facebook Live. We are only going to be doing Facebook. I tried YouTube a couple weeks and um, when the video loaded, the voice and my video were not synced so it was like watching one of those old <laughs> Japanese videos where you know they talk and then five minutes later their words come out <laughs> so I'm going to stop with the YouTube video and we'll just stick with Facebook um, but these videos will be available on YouTube just not live all right so let me scroll through and I did see a bunch of people jumping on hi Jessica Jessica can hear me good I'm glad that's good Kim hi Kim 
And Mary from Seattle. Hi, Mary. You're new to the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hi, Brianna. And Danielle is replying to Kim. She's waving. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions? I'm still trying to get myself familiar with the Facebook Live, so I don't see any questions coming up right now. And if you do have questions, you can feel free to put them in the comment section after this video is over, and I will respond to them. If you have a suggestion for a topic that you would like covered, I'm happy to entertain any thoughts that you have, as long as it's on fitness, uh, nutrition, and mindset. Don't ask me any math questions, because I'm the wrong person for that. So, <laughs> all right. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And, oh, wait a minute. We got a new comment coming in. Hold on. Who is this? Oh, Danielle is, okay. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> all right, so nobody has any questions. Again, if you think of any, you can feel free to put it in the comment section below. Um, and that is all for me today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me. Remember to check in next Wednesday at noon for the next Facebook Live. And remember to get fit, be fierce, and have no limits. And I will see you next week. Take care.